welcome back and thank you for joining us again here at AWS reInvent 2024 in Las Vegas. It is day four. It is getting close to the finish line and I am joined by my good friend A.M. Grabeni. But first, before that, my name is Adrian San Miguel. I'm a Principal Partner Enterprise Architect here at AWS. And most of the time you see me on here, it's because of this guy's fault. Ah, yeah, it's all my fault. Everything's my fault. I'm A.M. Grabeni. I'm a Developer Advocate here at AWS. And we are so excited to be talking with you live from reInvent on AWS On Air. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking Amazon Nova. And yeah. we got two friends, two new friends, who are going to tell us all about uh, multimodal understanding with Amazon Nova. Yeah, let's start. Please introduce yourself. Hey there, everyone. I am Vishwesh Sahasravadde. I'm a product lead in the Amazon uh, Artificial General Intelligence team responsible for building these new Nova understanding models. Hey, everyone. My name is Farah Elbi. I'm a, I'm a principal product manager also in Amazon AGI, building these uh, Nova foundation models. All right, let's start right there, right? Let's start with, I know we had a, an earlier segment, but people may be joining us for the first time. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the stream if you are. We are live. We are looking at chat. If you have questions, please filter them in through chat, and they will get filtered through these two people sitting down at the end, and we'll get them answered live. But let's start right there with Amazon Nova Foundation Models. What was announced, what are they, and what are people going to be using them for? So it was really exciting, actually. On Tuesday, um, Andy announced the Amazon Nova Foundation Model family. He introduced two categories of models. Mm -hmm. One we refer to as understanding models, which we're going to talk about today. And the other one, which is the content creation models. I think that was covered in an earlier segment where Rohit and Dinesh went through some of those uh, key models. And, and it's really, really exciting. These multimodal understanding models can basically understand text, image, documents, and video, and generate text. And the other models that were introduced um, previously that also were announced um, can essentially understand text and generate images or videos. So we're going to dive deeper today into these multimodal understanding models. So million dollar question for us. Um, and Vivesh, also, I think you, this may fall into your domain as well. Many customers um, may not even understand that they can use more than one model or more than one approach when they're going out and, and building these, these applications. Is this yeah. something that you saw so much of, you had to go through and build it in this specific way to be able to account for that? Or, or is there some other uh, external influencer that decided you're thinking to go down this path? So, you know, originally when these models were built, a lot of them only supported text modalities. And, you know, we've seen a lot of customers have multimodal documents that have various different formats and video, which is something that's new on Bedrock now, mm -hmm. where you can essentially natively understand video content. So if you, you know, have a video of, which we're going to show later today, like a video of a football game being played, you can essentially ask the model and it'll be able to actually explain what it's seeing. It's really, really interesting. And through speaking to customers, and through speaking to customers, we also, we also understood from customers that speed and cost were really important. And that's why these models are one of the most price performer models on Bedrock. Okay, and so we're going to be talking about uh, uh, this multimodal, multimodal, this is tough for me to say, multimodal <laughs> understanding with these foundation models. Um, we got a poll question, so I want to drop in that too, since mm -hmm. we're, we're starting into that part of the conversation. Uh, our poll question here is, how can you teach Amazon Nova understanding models to identify images and videos where your physical product is present? Uh, so what do you think? And some of our poll questions are opinions. Some of them have a correct answer. This one has a correct answer. So let's see if the audience can get the correct answer here. Uh, Let's, let's move on from the poll. We'll, we'll check back in uh, as people answer for us and move back into this discussion about using these things. So, like, what is this next wave? Like, what, what is going to be unlocked with this multimodal understanding? So, essentially, customers will be able to build a wide range of applications. You know, mm -hmm. It could be simple use cases like summarization of content. It could be you know, understanding multimodal documents. And like I said earlier, it could be understanding video content. And you could build you know, various agentic applications as well, where you have multiple APIs that have to interact with proprietary systems and tools to take various actions and you know, deliver value to their end customers. So it's really exciting what you can build with these. And I'm super excited to show some few things today. I, and please, if you'll, if you'll humor me for a moment, you dropped in a term there that I've heard a couple times. Uh, he doesn't humor me, ever. Never. Uh, 
he dropped in a term there that, that maybe chat and maybe me are unfamiliar with. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking on their behalf now. Definitely not just for me. And people, people who are deep in this area talk to me about this all. They, they seem very excited about agentic workflows. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what that is? What is an agentic workflow and why is, is multimodal understanding uh, a, a part of this? So essentially, normally when you essentially, you know, essentially perform inference on a model, you essentially send it a text prompt and it gives you a response. That is useful to a point, but what you really, where real value comes from is when you can interact with other systems. So for example, mm -hmm. let's say you have documents in an S3 bucket and you want to perform Q&A over it. So you essentially be able to ask a question and you'll be able to retrieve this content. And these agentic workflows can get even more complicated mm -hmm. where you can take various actions like booking a taxi, for example, right, using these models. So, and they do this by calling these APIs. There's like, there could be 10, 15 APIs in the prompt. The model has to actually decide which service to call in order to get the right information to take the action. So let, me, let me see if I got it. It sounds like you're chaining things together and each link in the chain is an agent, yeah. right, that has a, a purpose that it can fulfill within that chain in that workflow. Is that yeah, a fair I mean, estimation? It's a, yeah, it's a reasonable explanation. Of the, yeah. Okay, cool. A reasonable explanation. <laughs> Did you hear that? You're reasonable. I'm putting that on my resume. No. Reasonable oh, explanation. Boy. Just like pi, you're quite irrational, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I know we got a demo. Uh, I know we want to pull that up too. So maybe we can keep talking while, while you walk us through. I know sure. you've got the, the Nova Foundation models and invest. We haven't heard from yeah. you yet either. Um, you know, how are people using this? What are they excited about when you talk to them? What are they most excited about is something that customers are always most excited about, whether it's they want things shipped to their address or whether they want AWS services. Mm. They always want faster and they always want more price performance, cheaper. Mm -hmm. And that's what these models excel at, which is they are the most price performing models on Bedrock. They're over 75% cheaper than the best performing models today on Bedrock. Wow. Uh, and they can they are some of the fastest benchmarked by independent benchmarkers um, uh, artificial analysis uh, that they can perform as fast as any other pro model in the industry well, that's pretty they fantastic I mean, uh, a couple of days ago Tuesday I believe we had a partner that was actually live coding up here hadn't worked with it hadn't really tried it more than a couple of uh, tests before he jumped on stage and we were all just blown away with how fast it responded, and then he eventually got back to me and said, hey, I think this is the estimate of that, what that demo was, and it was far well below what his expectations were. So, you know, kudos, done a fantastic job here. Well, we got your screen pulled up for us. You want to start walking us through yeah. how this works? Yeah, so I, I just want to quickly briefly just show you the, the landing page where there's a couple of like key yeah. points of information I want to point out. So when you go to the Nova landing page, you can see you know we've got understanding models and the content creation models. And if you scroll towards the bottom, you can get a, a quick view of the different capabilities of each model. And then towards the bottom, you'll have things like the user guide. So you can um, click on that and see what the user guide has. If you scroll back to the top, and actually click into the Nova Understanding models, we always get commonly asked, like, what are the benchmarks for these models? How do they perform? How do they compare? Mm -hmm. If you go to this page, you'll see for each of the three models, if you click on each of the tabs, you can see the different benchmarks that have been run and compared against other models and see kind of where the performance stacks. And if you want to dive a bit deeper, you can also go to the actual tech report. But what we'll do is we'll go back to the previous page and we'll jump into Bedrock just to show you how you can actually get access to these models. And if I scroll down, so initially, you know, because these are models on you, you may have to actually modify access to get access to these models. And I've done that. So you can see I've got access to Pro, Lite, and Micro. Mm -hmm. um, just for the sake of it, I'll also enable Nova Real and Nova Canvas, which I know were covered earlier. And essentially, you just click Submit, and then click Submit again. And then now, if you scroll down, you'll see that you have access. Once you have access, you can essentially navigate to, for example, the playground, and you can then select these models and start chatting with them. I'm not going to do that here because I'm going to show you something a bit more interesting. Ah, so, okay. so let's jump into the uh, model catalog. And this is where you go when you want to essentially identify uh, the API that you want to invoke as part of your application. So let's say here we've got Nova Pro. And this is essentially the model ID, and they're all backwards compatible. So if you're already using the Converse API on Bedrock, you'll be able to essentially just replace the line and, and essentially use uh, Nova models immediately. So we've built a simple user interface using this endpoint. And I just want to quickly demonstrate a couple of things for you today. 
So first, I'm just going to actually show you. Frank, can I actually pause you real quick right there? Sure. Uh, we do have a question from chat. Okay. So um, they ask, a common LLM workflow is audio to transcription mm. to text, then prompt, then back to the LLM. Is the expectation that multimodal models will be more accurate than this because they do not rely on the accuracy of speech to text services? It's a, it's a really, really good question. So um, one thing actually Andy did announce is also our speech to speech uh, models that's also coming uh, okay. later, um, early, early next year. And normally what you do is you'd essentially use uh, ASR, which is uh, audio sort of transcription. You take the audio, convert it to text, and then text back into you know text to speech essentially to be able to then voice it back. The issue is you lose a lot of uh, information in that transfer, mm -hmm. right? All the like the prosody, the emotion, all those kind of things. You can encode it to some extent, but it's not as native as something having having a, a, a like a genuine speech to speech model, for example, right? Right. Because you can then maintain those contexts with these models. Initially, we don't have audio enabled, but it's, as I said, it's going to come next year. So at that point, we'll essentially be able to have a model that can understand any modality. Oh, sounds really interesting. That right. does sound interesting. Sorry for interruption, no, but no, I no, thought it was a great question too so hopefully so just going back to the the video understanding capabilities i was talking about yes. so I've, got, I've got a quick video here this is a 12 second video and what we're going to do is i'm just showing you so you can see what it looks like what the video is about mm -hmm. and then what i'm, I'm going to use a simple interface that i described earlier to actually just ask the model what it thinks of it yeah okay right? so it's a short video so i'm going to flick over to that ui so i've got it here okay. so i'm just gonna essentially just upload that video and this is using the Nova Pro model. Exactly, yeah. So I've literally hooked it up to the API that I showed earlier. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, describe this video. And I can do it in two words. <laughs> Broken play. So, <laughs> so, love to see what this so, says. so normally, what happens is, in order to actually understand videos, a lot of models, um, you have to actually uh, extract the keyframes yourself. Um, and then pass those to the model as images here. We do all of that for you. We sample the video, pass oh. it to the model, and then you just essentially have to provide the video. That's and really cool. You get a nice, good description of what's going on in the, in the actual video. Yeah, um, there, there's a developer advocate, uh, probably a lot of people watching know who he is, his name is Banjo. He, he builds a lot of cool uh, uh, demos with, with you know, foundation models and things like that. He, he built a demo of... Uh, it was it was playing a video game, right? Very famous video game that I won't name. You can go look it up. Uh, anyway, that's how he was doing it, though. It was taking frame by frame yeah, of the video yeah. game, and then based off of where you were at, it would make a decision: turn left, turn right. Mm -hmm. Right. It was a really cool demo. Uh, but that's nice to hear that you don't have to do that with this video. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously. Not the same thing with a video game necessarily because that's you know, exactly yeah, but that's yeah. neat. It's what very, do we got? Very very simple and and you can just pass it to the model and you can see here it's essentially just saying the video depicts a football game and then it describes what's going on in the video. So I'm gonna move on to something uh, slightly different now. Okay. Um, let's jump into like image understanding. So okay. let's look at the image capabilities as part of the other visual capabilities that the model has. And specifically handwriting, because handwriting is mm. interesting because I mean I don't know if this happens to you but <laughs> How many times I can't read my own handwriting? Yep. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. So I'm going to pass this, and I'm going to uh, actually ask it to output a JSON format okay. to representing this table. Okay. okay. Because it's critical for downstream systems to actually have a machine-readable format that they can then use. So let's go do that. So again, I'm just going to refresh this. Using, again, Nova Pro, I'm just going to take that image and use the handwriting one. And all I'm going to say is... Yeah. Trends. As you do this, I'll, I'll tell a story real quick. Um, uh, when I was in kindergarten, Adrian, okay. I refused to do my easel work, uh, which is painting. Yeah. Uh, and the teacher told my parents, he will never develop his fine motor skills. And that is reflective in my handwriting now, just so you know. Mm. Mm. Uh, so maybe I this could help me. Never would have known, but I see that you've managed to easel your way into <laughs> telling yet another story of your youth. Yeah, and uh, it might explain why I use computers now. That, uh, you type. that in and of itself is an art form. You don't have to yeah. write. So you can see here, um, I've asked it to essentially transform it into JSON and identify cases where the use case cannot, cannot be enabled based on the input. And mm -hmm. you can see... It's correctly parsed the information. It's created a nice JSON format. That's amazing. And it's able to actually yeah. really like clearly identify, you know, the, the ticks and the crosses and even mm -hmm. the the question marks where it will say something like uncertain, right? Oh, so yeah. it was like ah. tick is un enabled, uncertain. 
is the question mark and then uh, disabled is like a cross. Wow. And, and like you can see the detail, it's actually captured everything that was in the image, which yeah. again is this to its uh, visual capabilities. Yeah. It, it looks like it's an array too, right? Yeah. Uh, so it even yeah. like was able to, I mean, because like a, a table is not necessarily directly easily represented in a JSON document, mm. right? That, that's like, generally I'd say more of a CSV format, yeah. but it still was even able to to take it and put it into a data format that- Exactly. Like exactly. a human might even like have to think about a little bit too. Exactly. That's really neat. Exactly. What's really exactly. neat about this is I've got a stack of old recipes <laughs> that I don't even remember or can't even read them. I'm gonna go use this selfishly myself when I get back home. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great. so cool. It's great. So I want to show you one more thing. Please. Mm -hmm. And and this this time we're gonna use, um, actually use Nova Micro, which is our, this is our text only model. And this one was interesting because, you know, originally we were thinking, you know, we'll have Lite Pro and then the Premier, which is the more capable model that's gonna come early next year. Mm -hmm. But we realized that customers really want something really efficient and fast, as Vishwas was pointing out earlier. And then that's why we had this text only micro. And I'm gonna ask you something simple and in, I'll explain why I'm asking in a moment. So I'm gonna say, give me the top 10 mathematical equations. Hey. The thing I'm trying to illustrate here is you can see how beautifully formatted the text is. And it's, yeah, actually, yeah. Be, it's actually formatting it in, in LaTeX. So oh. we can render the formulas in the way that mathematical you know, formulas should be represented. And this is like our fastest, um, 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 most uh, cost-effective model. And so you can see it, it really formats the way I understood the question and it was able to really uh, present the content in a way that the UI can render it appropriately. That is really interesting. Uh, wow, okay. I wasn't expecting that one, were you? Yeah, no, not at all. And I'm thinking, I'm remembering much like you, but back in your, your formative years, thinking how many times I had to scribble it out and it wasn't matching exactly what the instructor or professor was looking for. This is, this is pretty fantastic. I mean, this is hard to get right, even with the best of intentions yeah. and belief and, and ability. So this is, yeah. Feels like living in the future sometimes, Adrian. Just a little bit. All Just right. A little bit. Uh, so let's let's move to uh, talking about. I mean, we, we we directly saw how to get started and start using this. Uh, mm -hmm. You just go into Bedrock, yeah, right? Basically. Um, what moving from the playground, let's say, <laughs> out into. Well, I mean, it, it is called the playground, yeah. Um, moving out to a, a more production application. What do you what do you suggest to? Uh, customers, right, that are, are moving, they've been typing in here, you know, seeing the, the power. What's the journey look like moving this to, to prod? So if, you, if you're, you know, if you're already on Bedrock, then it's like I said earlier, if you're using the Converse API, it's pretty much just switching to the model and you can, if you've already got various production applications that do, like, for example, a, a good use case is trans transcript summarization of customer service calls, yeah. right? You're, you're summarizing at the end so that you have some succinct representation of what that conversation was about. You can immediately put that, put the API uh, into your application and essentially start running it and getting, you know, seeing how the model performs and you can do, you know, side-by-side -side evaluation. But that's one example. Yeah. If you want to use, for example, Nova Pro, you can do more complex identic applications, right? Okay. So if you have like a really long prompt with multiple APIs, again, these models have been designed so that they can orchestrate over those APIs and take the right action depending on your application. So, you know, since you've been just go straight in and just essentially change the line of code, really. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm a big fan of Converse API. Uh, unfortunately, we are near time. here at time, mm -hmm. um, but this this has been incredible well, it's truly uh, i really enjoyed seeing all of the different use cases that you you showed us here for our thank you business thank you. as well uh but for all of you at home watching or wherever you're watching from stick around because we still have more we still have more to talk to you about somehow we do i know so stay there <laughs>